Okay, so for this next part, you want to make sure that you're continuing to observe in the mirror. Um, some things that I want to point out are the guideline for the bottom of your nose and the guideline for the eye placement is going to help you um, to place your ears um, as well. So I'm just going to erase this off of here. So you want to make sure that your head is tilted up and looking straight in the mirror when you're observing to draw your ears. Um, your ears tend to attach to your head um, at that um, line that we use for your eyes and then they come up to almost like the height of where your eyebrows will be um, which is going to be um, kind of like arched up from where this keystone area is. So you do have to really um, work with observation for your ears. Some people's ears um, we can see more of them because of how they're angled on their heads. Some people we just see kind of parts of them um, because they're kind of like you know more against your head. Uh, some of you, if you have longer hair and it's going to be down in your portrait, um, you might not even really have to draw ears. I would just put the shape there in case you end up um, styling your hair in a way that part of your ear um, is going to be shown if you know that you're going to wear your hair down um, for those of you that have longer hair. Um, my hair is up right now. I don't know if I'm going to keep it that way for this portrait. Probably will. Um, <laughs> And so I'm just going to go ahead and just draw in the ears. I don't really advocate for adding like a lot, a lot of detail to the ears because we tend to want um, them to not be a point of emphasis in your portrait. Um, we tend to want more of the emphasis to be on the eyes um, and your other features. So, I mean, it's certainly up to you if you want to add more detail to your ears, that's fine. But just kind of simply getting the basic forms that are there. Um, from observation using the bottom of the nose guideline and then kind of the guideline here arching upwards I think is fine. Sometimes it's helpful to just gesture the ears in quickly and loosely and then go back and kind of tidy up details. They are pretty much symmetrical, but um, you can kind of observe them both independently. Uh, again, this part with those uh, guidelines that I gave you is still really up to observation because everyone's ears do look different, just like all of the features on your face. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to draw is your neck. And so if you actually feel like right underneath the back of the bottom of your ears, um, that's like where your neck starts. So if you take your fingers or your hands and just kind of feel like up behind your ears, um, down towards the bottom, you can kind of feel like where your chin and your neck like intersect right at that point. And so for your neck, I want you to look in the mirror and just kind of see like where it starts to become visible out from behind your ears. And then typically your shoulders kind of come out from like behind your neck. Um, now since we're just doing this on sketchbook page like size paper uh, you don't have to worry as much about you know like drawing the full shoulders but something you should know is that your shoulders on either side of your head are about a head width um, before they start to kind of angle down you know or where you know they start to gradually angle down for your arms. So go ahead, if you feel like you need to draw any more details um, into your neck, go ahead. Um, we're not going to have a whole lot of room for clothing in this smaller size portrait, um, but you can go ahead and just kind of add any details in your anatomy from observation there, um, just lightly for right now. Um, and certainly if you have a top um, with a collar that you're going to include in your portrait. You could add that now as well. It's important to remember that clothing sits on top of the body and so you want to make sure that any um, fabric just kind of comes out through, you know, there's like kind of a space between where the edge of the clothing starts and where the, um, you know, the neck is. Okay, so for hair, you should note that your hairline is much is down like further um, than it's not your hair is not just going to sit on the top of your scalp here. Um, it overlaps onto your scalp and so you can just go ahead and it's about like should be about like a quarter of the way down where your hairline falls. Um, and so depending on your hairstyle, you're going to draw something different here. If your hair is kind of like back like mine is um, and you don't have like any bangs that hang forward or like, you know, 
other hair that just kind of like juts forward, um, then you're going to look at your hairline from observation and add it in and just kind of look at how it kind of curves and goes around areas. So your hair does also have some volume. Some of you probably have hair that has more volume than others, but you want to just take into account that like that line that we drew for your face shape is your scalp. And so um, your hair is going to kind of go above that line. That line's almost like just a guideline right now. Uh, I like to gesture the hair in and just kind of loosely block it in as basic shapes. Do not draw individual hairs. Uh, there's a quicker way to use blending and texture and also erasing uh, to get the appearance of individual hair as opposed to drawing each individual line. Okay, I'm not sure why I waited till the end to draw eyebrows, but eyebrows, you want to look for a reference point for the inner corner of the eyebrows. Some people groom them um, to line up with the inner corner of their eyes. Uh, Frida Kahlo certainly didn't. She had a unibrow, um, and that was something that she did not alter because she was celebrating her Mexican heritage. Um, now, I like to look at the eyebrows as basic shapes to start, just like the hair. And I look for a shape that kind of goes up to the arch in the eyebrow. So you may have an arch that's higher you may have an arch that's not as pronounced um, but I would try breaking up your eyebrows into two separate shapes um, and then you can look for other reference points for where the eyebrow ends with that second shape that kind of starts to angle down from the arch but again everyone's eyebrows are different um, so some people will have eyebrows that kind of align um, with the outer corner of the corner of the eye and the outer edge of the nostril, um, some people will not. So just kind of look for different reference points for yourself, kind of where things align. And I would break them into two basic shapes. Don't draw individual um, eyebrow um, hairs right now. Uh, I would just kind of, you know, look at them uh, as basic shapes for right now and just look for like where they fall in place on your face. Look for different reference points for them. After you are done completing all the steps that I demonstrated, I would like you to go back in and just tidy everything up working from observation. So you should have your features placed kind of in the basic proportions uh, that they fall within our face. Uh, you can leave the guidelines on your sketch for right now. Uh, that is fine. That just helps me to see and assess that you follow the instructions from the video. Uh, you do not have to erase them, um, but what you should do is take um, some time to look at your reflection in the mirror and fix things up um, to be closer to your observation. So that might mean adjusting things a little bit out of the guidelines, and that's okay. Um, they are guidelines, uh, but hopefully they got you off to a good start to getting things placed. Um, you can also look at the scanned in um, portrait packet that I have on Schoology for help with adding more details as well. You're not expected to have any value on your sketch at this point, um, but you should be it should show uh, your application of the proportions that I presented in the videos uh, so far in our course. And it should also show some observation that you've been looking in the mirror and um, altering things and making sure that you're spending some time observing your reflection as you're drawing. I do here start to kind of sketch in just like the form of my cheekbone uh, and kind of like places where shadows and highlights are going to fall. That's kind of the next direction that we're going in um, is going to be starting to think about placement of value and how the form of our face reflects highlights and shadows.